hello guys and uh, welcome back to another video in this video i'm going to explain to you uh, another example of a video series on kinematics so this is our second example so in this example again we are going to discuss a very real life example and what is that so let me quickly write down the question a bead moves along the spoke of a wheel at constant speed u meters per second the wheel rotates with a uniform angular velocity omega in radians per second about an axis fixed in space the initial conditions are given at t equal to 0 the spoke is along the x axis and the b is at the origin we have to find the bead's velocity at some later time t right and there are two conditions to this question a in the polar coordinate and b in the cartesian coordinate <coughs> and this was just the first question in the next part of the question uh, part 2 you have to find the acceleration of the bead in the polar coordinate right so beginning with the first part of the question question number 1 and a we have to find the velocity of that bead in the polar coordinate system so let me draw the wheel so this is the wheel and this is the spoke right and there is a bead on the spoke which is traveling radial it is given the question then it has a radial velocity u right where the wheel is rotating with an angular velocity omega so we know from a previous video that the velocity in the polar coordinate is given by r dot r cap plus r theta dot theta cap now it is given that r dot is equal to u r cap plus 
R. What is R? R is nothing but the distance of this B from the origin which it has traveled in time t. Right. So it, you can easily see that R is nothing but u t. Right. In time t, if it has a velocity u, it will cover a distance R. Right. So we get u t into theta dot, which is omega. It is given the question that the angular velocity is omega. Theta cap. Okay, and that's it. This is the velocity of the body in the polar coordinate system. Now, for the next part, we have to derive the velocity of the body in the Cartesian coordinate system. Right, and in the Cartesian coordinate system, uh, let's say the radial velocity is vr. Okay, this u is equal to vr, and it it is making an angle theta. Let's say this is the x axis and this is the y axis. So, and it makes an angle theta with the x axis. Then this vr will point in the r cap direction because it is a radial velocity. And you can see from here that radial velocity is along the r cap direction. Whereas, consider the tangential velocity v theta, which points in the theta cap direction. So what is our tangential velocity? U t omega, that is our tangential velocity, right? And it points in the theta cap direction. And we know that r cap makes an angle theta with the x axis and v theta makes an angle theta with the y x. Theta cap makes an angle theta with the y axis, okay? from our previous video. So we would get the x component of velocity, which is a component of a vr and v theta along in the x direction, as vr is making an angle theta with x axis. So we get vr cos theta. And v theta makes an angle, uh, is points along the theta cap direction. And we know that theta caps makes an angle uh, of theta with the y axis. And it has the uh, other component along the minus x axis and hence it will be minus v theta sine theta right and similarly vy would be vr sine theta plus v theta as i told you has a component along the y axis so v theta cos theta and uh, as we know any vector can be written as vx x cap plus vy y cap where vx and vy now we are going to substitute from here okay so we have vr what is vr is nothing but u the radial velocity u cos theta minus v theta as i told you is u t omega so we have u omega t sine theta x cap now, one thing which I want you to notice uh, is that theta dot is equal to omega. So similar, uh, we had r dot equal to u, which gave r equal to u t, right? Similarly, theta dot equal to omega will give theta equal to omega t. And it is uh, really simple to prove, you know, because d theta upon dt is equal to omega. And if you just solve this equation, you will get d theta is equal to omega dt, right? From zero to t, and this when time t equal to zero, theta was zero because the spoke. It is given in the question that the spoke pointed along the x-axis at time t equal to zero, and at some later time, let's say it makes an angle theta with the x-axis. So this will give theta equal to omega is constant in time, so it will just come out is equal to omega. Okay. So over here, I'm just going to substitute these thetas with omega t. So I will get u cos omega t, right? And this as sine omega t plus vy is u sine omega t, right? Plus v theta is u omega t cos omega t y cap. Can you just compare this equation which we have got in Cartesian coordinate system with what we have got in polar coordinate system? This is just nothing, right? Compared to what we have got in Cartesian coordinate system, this equation looks 
horrible right whereas this one is so simple and this is a very good proof that for rotating bodies for bodies under rotational motion it is always better to use polar coordinate system right the next thing that we are asked to find out is uh second question is the acceleration of this uh, bead in the polar coordinate system right and uh, what was our definition of acceleration in the polar coordinate system it was r double dot minus r theta dot squared r cap plus r theta double dot Plus two r dot theta dot theta cap. Right now, in my previous video, I had promised that while solving uh, problems, most of the terms of this equation uh, will go to zero. And here we are going to see how. So, since the body has a constant velocity u along the radial direction, so r dot is equal to u, right, which is independent of time. Which means r double dot will be equal to zero because what is the derivative of a constant? It is zero. So r double dot will be zero, right? And if you see theta dot is also equal to omega, which means theta dot double dot with the same logic would be zero. Now hence we see that two of the terms have gone to zero of this equation. This one is equal to zero. And here theta dot double dot is equal to zero, so this is also equal to zero. And hence, so what we are left with is r. What was r? R was equal to u into t, right? So we have u t theta dot was omega, so omega square r cap plus two uh, r dot is equal to u theta dot is equal to omega theta dot, theta cap. And hence, we can uh, we have found the acceleration and velocity of this spoke in the polar coordinates. And you know that if you know the acceleration and velocity, now you can easily find out the trajectory of the bead using integration. So now, at this moment, I just want you to pause the video and imagine what you feel will be the trajectory or the path which this bead will take in space. As the wheel is rotating, are you done? Now let me quickly show you what it actually looks like. So let me insert the picture. Yeah. So this is uh, how the actual trajectory of that bead will look like, and uh, this is known as the very famous Archimedean spiral. Archimedean, this is an I, Archimedean spiral. Yep. So this trajectory which the bead is going to follow is going to be called an Archimedean uh, Archimedean spiral. And in fact, any body which has a constant tangential acceleration and a constant radial velocity, radial velocity, this one, uh, as you can easily see from here, that the radial velocity of this bead is constant as given in the question, and the tangential acceleration of this body is also constant. And such bodies are naturally going to cover this type of trajectory. It is going to start at the origin and is going to follow this trajectory known as the Archimedean spiral. And the trajectory looks pretty beautiful, you know. With this, uh, uh, let us end the video. I just wanted to explain to you this beautiful geometry of the Archimedean spiral and the conditions under which a body will follow this trajectory. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.